and welcome to my channel talking with tamaya if you're new here make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and if you're a returner as always thank you guys so much for your consistent love and support so as you guys can probably see by the title this is a video all about law school in terms of what it means to be a law school how to balance life as a law student and how to become a law student. So I don't want this video to be too lengthy, but this is a Q&A. So on my social media, I asked you guys to pose any law school related questions that you guys have. Since most of us are starting law school, um, have started law school or want to start law school. So I'm here to share some tips with you guys, give you guys some insight on my experience, um, what I've done in the past, what has helped me, what has hurt me, and hopefully this can help you guys have an all around successful law school career. Let's get into it. So I want to first give you guys a little bit of background on me. So it's not like who is she and what is she even talking about and what does she know? I know a lot. All right. So listen, <laughs> I am Tamaya. For those of you guys who don't know, I am a dual JD MBA student, which means I am a law student while simultaneously getting my MBA. So that is a four year program. I have been in the law school environment for four years. I have taken law school classes for going on three years. So I want to break down how my program works for those of you guys who might be interested or for those of you guys who might just be confused. So the way it works is I completed my first year of law school. After that, I went to business school and I completed a full year of business school without taking any law school courses. I was still present on the law school campus because I was president of the Black Law Student Association. So although I was not taking classes at the law school at that time, I was present at the law school at that time because I had to plan events, I had meetings, and just a lot of things to do in terms of presiding over an organization on the law school campus. So then we fast forward to this past year where I was simultaneously taking classes at both the business school and the law school. Right now, if you can probably tell by the setting, I am not at home. I'm not filming where I usually film. I'm currently in Germany, so I'm completing my last requirement for business school. My last requirement is study abroad. I'm studying abroad in Europe right now, um, so I will actually be missing the first week of law school, which starts tomorrow. So I have one more year of law school, and after that, I will be sitting for the California bar exam, and from there, I will be a successful businesswoman and attorney. So that's my life, that's my circumstances. I just wanted to give you guys some insight on that. But now I want to just get into the Q&A and I kind of want to center this video um, on like work-life balance because I've experienced trying to balance it and then finding a way to successfully balance it. And I found that most of the questions I received on my social media were centered around balance in some way, shape or form. So I'm going to answer all of the questions that I received so long as they're not redundant or something that I've covered a lot. And a lot of them were. Um, and then a lot of them were just very similar and somehow focused on work-life balance. So I'm gonna get into the questions. Um, it's gonna be hard because if you guys don't know, I did break my Canon G7X. Um, my camera, my, my vlog camera, my filming camera. So right now I'm filming on my cell phone. So I do need to go to my social media and pull it up. So I'm gonna work on that right now. I'm gonna try to send it to either my iPad or my computer so I can like go through the questions. And then from there, we're gonna just get it started. So let's go. Honestly, you guys, the power of technology is just remarkable. So I was able to airdrop the questions to my computer. I just screenshot them from Instagram airdrop them to my computer super easy super simple so i'm going to get into the questions now and then i just want to kind of give you guys just some perspective based off of my experiences as a law student so let's go okay so the first question that i got was what's different about ug oh okay undergrad what's different about undergrad versus my jd mba so that's a really good question i know a lot of you guys 
might be thinking about going to law school and some of you guys have expressed to me that you're interested in doing both law school and business school and to that i say you are just as crazy as me but in terms of the differences um i'll go into first um, the differences academically. So academically, in, in undergrad, I majored in mass communications with an emphasis in media studies and a minor in marketing. So as you can already see from what I majored in, it's a lot different than law school. And it's a lot, it's pretty different than business school as well. I would say first off, it's different in terms of workload. I'm um, an undergrad Although I did work very hard and I did work very diligently to do well, and I did do very well in undergrad, nothing compares to uh, <laughs> the workload in law school and business school. Um, there, it's just a lot more volume of work. Um, and then in addition to that, it's um, more tedious. So I would say um, I it's kind of hard to lump the two because law school and business school are already so different in themselves. So I'll just first do like undergrad and law school. Um, first, the major difference is how you prepare for classes. Um, in undergrad, you typically have exams. You might have four exams in a semester. Um, you have quizzes. You have different things that can help you um, ultimately bring your grade up. Um, and that's not the case in law school. In law school, for the most part, in most classes, your grade is dependent on one exam. Sometimes you get lucky and you have a professor who might give you a paper that's worth like 25% of your grade. But for the most part, the bulk of your grade depends on your final examination grade. So that means that throughout the semester, the readings that you do, the notes that you take in class, those are all necessary for you to do well on your final exam. It's not very easy for you to cram the night before a law school exam. In undergrad, you can do it. People have done it successfully and have walked out of there with an A. In law school, if you are able to get an A after cramming for one day, something went terribly wrong and you're probably going to have to retake that exam because either you cheated, there's something wrong with the grading system, or something just went awry. Like that's really the how I can say it. Like it's just hard. It's very hard for you to be able to cram in law school. In law school, you really want to just be on your stuff so that you're never in that situation where you have to even attempt to cram. Because if I can be honest with you, sometimes a week, most times, a week isn't even sufficient for you to adequately prepare for a law school exam. And when I say adequately prepare, I mean get an A on the exam. Of course, you can take a week and then ultimately get a C or a B minus on the exam, but you don't want that. You don't want to be, you don't want to see minus. You're graded on a curve. So if you got a B or you got a C minus, most times, like, that's not a very great grade, if we're being honest, on the law school spectrum. Business school, on the other hand, is more similar to undergrad in the sense that there's work, 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 work. In undergrad, either you have a project, you have a paper, you have an exam, you have a quiz. And it's the same way in business school there's always something to be done the difference is these like how intense the work is in business school the work is a lot more intense so i have taken marketing in undergrad and i have taken marketing in business school i will say that some of the concepts of course they're the same they're marketing concepts but i received a lot more work in business school and it's a lot more to do another thing is just thinking about your responsibilities the responsibilities that you had in undergrad you absolutely do not have while you're in law school or you're in business school now we're becoming adults we have bills we have things to do we're balancing jobs we're balancing families we're balancing relationships and you don't have a lot of that weight in undergrad so it kind of brings on an added layer of stress if you let it stress you out or just work um so it's different a lot in terms of subject matter and then just in terms of lifestyle like your life is different when you're in business school and you're in law school because you're growing up you have so many more responsibilities so that's kind of what i can say on that but good really good question all right next question how do you study before classes start um, so in terms of law school, you want to make sure that you're doing your readings before class. And the reason being is because in law school, we use the Socratic method for most courses, which means your professor can call you at any point and ask you to answer a question based on the reading that you should have done. Now, had you not done your reading, which sometimes people don't, there have been 
instances where I have not done my reading because I either have a test or I have a project or something. Life happens. Like, I'm a human, not a robot. So it happens. But it's a very uncomfortable situation to be in. Um, what I will say is if you ever do find yourself in that situation, don't BS it and waste a whole bunch of people's time. If it's not something that you can honestly figure out, just say, unfortunately professor i'm not quite sure um there are some people who say i haven't done the reading and i don't really i wouldn't say that but i would say i'm not quite sure um maybe i can potentially help you on the next question or something like that like just milk it make it happen so you don't look like a complete fool because you're already going to feel foolish but just know it happens to everybody um but how i prepare essentially for law school is i do my readings like that's how you prepare i also look at my notes from my previous class so Meaning, like, if I have that class on Tuesday and Thursday, um, I will look at my notes from the Tuesday class to prepare for class on Thursday, just so that I can kind of be on track with what we've covered and what we're covering. Um, and that's how I essentially prepare for business um, for law school. In terms of business school, preparing for class, we always have, like, homework or we have assignments. So that helps you prepare because you actually have things, for the most part, that should be turned in. So when you have that, it's kind of like you have no choice but to prepare for it because it's due. So, yes. Another person just asked a really good question. Are the loans worth the profession? This keeps going through my head. That is a complete personal question for you to ask yourself. I don't personally know everyone's financial situation. All I can say is what I know from my personal experience and what I know from other attorneys who I have talked to or who I have spoken with. So to give you guys a little bit of more clarification and context, what she's referring to is student loans. So for the most part, I don't really know any law student who doesn't have some type of student loan in some regard, um, whether it's just like a, for like a living expense or maybe they have loans from undergrad, like student loans are a thing, like it's, it's a thing. Um, and some some people can have very 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 extensive student loans and you have to ask yourself like am i going to pay this off um so i actually previously asked an attorney at a job that i worked um, a very very well respected talented amazing attorney who had student loans of course and i told her like that's always been a, like a concern of mine because i i do have a scholarship for both law school and business school but of course i have student loans as well and even from undergrad so first off apply for scholarships because that helps a lot i'm thankful that i don't have to worry about mountains and mountains and mountains of student loans because i was fortunate enough to get a scholarship but loans exist and what she told me is the life that i'm this is her words exactly the life that i'm living right now the opportunities that i am able to afford for my children the home that i currently live in i would have never been able to have anything like this had i not become an attorney so she said the few hundred dollars that i spend a month on my student loans is nothing compared to the life that i have now and that really struck a chord with me because yeah you're damn right like I'm going to be an attorney. Do you understand how significant that is to me? How significant that is to my family? What type of opportunities that's going to provide to my family? I'll Sorry, guys. My camera died. I mean, not died. My camera ran out of memory in the middle of doing my spiel. But I will ultimately say the lifestyle that I want for myself um, and the opportunities that I will be able to obtain as an attorney um there's no amount of money um that could stop me from doing that um if you know that you're someone who's not going to pay off your student loans if you don't believe that you'll be able to find a, a job to do that then I, like i said it's like a decision that you will have to make personally um but in terms of maybe trying to help pay close attention to the schools that you're applying to i've Seeing that some people are so eager to get to law school and they don't pay attention to things like the attrition rate, um, job placement, bar passage, things like that are important. Um, regardless of what people say, if you're going to a school and they have a 5% bar passage and a 10% job placement, then maybe it's not worth spending all of this money on student loans if the likelihood of you passing the bar or finding a job are so slim. Um, so I would say do your research, do your due diligence, but also don't not 
chase your dreams or not go and get a law degree or a business degree because you're worried about taking out student loans that's just my take on the situation um but like i said you should definitely talk to the people closest to you talk to yourself and then just think about what's best for you any tips on personal statements for law school admissions my tip is to look at sample personal statements um It's like writing anything. Um, it's not probably super fun, um, but what you want to really do is make sure that they get a feel for you. Um, they are going to be looking at thousands and thousands of different personal statements. So you want to kind of think about how you can distinguish yourself. And you don't want to distinguish yourself in a negative way, like you're someone who submitted a personal statement with tons of typos and sentences that don't make sense. And we can't figure out what point you're trying to make. Like you don't want to distinguish yourself in that way. But you definitely want to try and stand out as a candidate. Um, think about what topic you really want to address and also read the instructions. Some schools are very particular about what they want you to write on so if you're writing about why you want to be an attorney and they're asking you a completely separate different question that's not going to look really good um in terms of what to include in your personal statement i personally um just kind of told like my personal story about why I had an interest in law, um, my own background. So it's not very like, I don't think pertinent or helpful to anybody else because it's kind of like my personal situation and no one else can really relate with that and it doesn't resonate with anybody else. But I would say find your story. Like what are you trying to tell and dig deep? Like you should be asking yourself this question before you're even applying to law school. Like why is it that you want to become an attorney? Why is it that you want to go to law school? That was what my personal statement question was. So if you don't have an answer to that, maybe you should definitely consider and think about the true reason that you want to do that and then divulge that in your personal statement make it clear to them and try to articulate that in the best way that you can in terms of just like format and things like that i would say look up law school personal statement samples google is so helpful there are so many things like i can just google that right now law school sample personal statements or personal statement samples like they're all over the internet don't plagiarize but definitely try to get some insight and some inspiration from those who have already done it it's done all the time in the legal field we seek insight from what other attorneys have done i do that at work all the time seeing what other attorneys at my job have done before i work on an assignment like it's it's fine just don't plagiarize but get some insight get some context so that you're not just like shooting in the dark and you don't really know what direction to go in next question would i recommend buying used or news or news huh? <laughs> would i recommend buying used or new case books i have no preference if you're someone who um you're really big about creating your own notes and highlighting in your own way it's best for you to get new case books because if you buy a used one they do allow students to highlight in them and still return them so it's all about you i don't really have a preference some of my case books are new if it's like a newer edition i'll just go ahead and get the new book and some of them are used it doesn't hurt me one way or another. I actually found that last year, most of the time I just used the online casebook and it kind of helped me a lot more than actually the tangible casebook because it was just easier. Like I was able to highlight online on the platform. A lot of times they had sample questions and things like that. Like it was just easier and more just for me as a learner, but I don't have a preference. I will say that since you're watching this video, if you're looking for inexpensive textbooks or casebooks the best website i would recommend is gettextbooks.com that is g-e-t-t-e-x-t-b-o-o-k-s.com and the reason why i do recommend that site is because it compares all of the books that are on the market and then from there you can price match and you can compare online versions you can compare used versions and new versions and from there you can decide what's the best value for you so get textbooks.com it's not sponsored i just have been using that since my first year and i saved a lot of money on books that way so yeah I am all for used books. It saves money. Textbooks, case books, all of them are way too expensive. So if you can find cheaper books, that's great. Online books seem to be even cheaper. So I'm going to actually do that for probably all of my books this semester um, if we have that option. Um, and then if I ever do want to see the tangible book, I can always rent it from the bookstore at my school with no problem. So 
yeah um someone asked for hi i was interested in your tips and experience when applying to law schools, the LSAT, apps, ETC. Uh, my first tip is to start studying and preparing for the LSAT early. What I did is I studied the summer leading up to my senior year of college. I spent the entire summer preparing for the LSAT. And then in August, I began taking an, a course. I would say, I think that there might be an even better way to do that. I think that maybe you can start the summer of your junior year of college if it's something that you know you want to do. So that way you have room to like kind of figure some things out. If you don't get the score you want, you can continue to work. You can continue to like try to improve. But I would say in terms of preparing for the LSAT, start early. I would also say it's not fun. A lot of people think that this is something that can be like super fun to do, like it's not fun and it's not easy. If it was fun and it was easy, everybody would be going to law school. It's not. And people set themselves up because they're thinking like, oh, how can I make this fun or how can I make this interesting? You can't. You have to sit down. You have to focus and you have to get it done. If you cannot be disciplined and di diligent enough to do that, you really have to reconsider this career because that same discipline and diligence has to be used in the workplace and i realized like how hard i work to prepare for the lsat is how hard i work at work every day it's real like it's a very complex field but it's rewarding and if it's something that you want to do you'll be happy with doing it but i would say get it out of your head that you're going to be having a blast while sitting down and studying for six hours eight hours at a time it's not fun but it's worth it if it's what you want i would also say repetition 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 um the best way for you to see your score increase the best way to get the best grades the best way to improve in anything is to repeat what you're doing so in terms of the lsat you can't take four practice exams and think that you're going to score a 180 it's impossible it's impractical unless you're a genius i would say that it's very helpful for you to try to do at least one to two exams a week for a few months as you're preparing for the lsat that will help you feel more confident when you go and sit to take the exam so i highly recommend that people take practice exams and it's not about just taking your practice exams it's about how you review them so you don't want to just review the questions that you got wrong you also want to review the questions that you got right because you want to know why you got it right and that will ensure that you get it right again the next time so review it might not be fun but it will be worth it stay focused stay down it will work out for you if you want it bad enough you will get it trust me in terms of the application process i applied to like 12 schools 10 to 12 schools i would say reach out to schools and see if they have like fee waivers some schools will waive your application fee because it can be very very expensive um but i would say that it's better to apply earlier don't be that person who waits until the last minute just because you can there are some schools who do rolling admissions which is really cool but you want to make sure that you try to get your things in as early as possible because students tend to wait until the last minute and you don't want to be the student that's in that bunch of the last minute also they give money as they receive the application so if you're someone who's interested in the scholarship the sooner the better uh, next question, what made me want to become a lawyer or go to law school? So I initially went to law school with the intent to become an executive um, for a telecommunications, entertainment, or media company. I still want to do that, but along the way, somehow, some way, I fell in love with law. I didn't expect it. I didn't think that was going to happen. Um, I went to law with the intent to become an exec. I wanted to be a CEO specifically, and now I love trial work i love working um at my law firm that i work at now i love civil law i love personal injury i love um product liability i love torts i love like employment law like i love these things um on the plaintiff side i don't know about the defense side but i'm interested in learning about that as well so i love the law so honestly i went there with one intent and i found a passion along the way so i'm still going to be an executive i'll still be a ceo but i also want to practice some too so We'll see what happens. Next question was, how do I study and stay motivated? I will say you have to want it to win it. It is so easy for me to not be motivated. I don't know. People think I'm a robot. I'm not. I'm so human. It's not even funny. I can barely even do the robot. Like, 
not stiff enough. So I am a human. There are times when I don't want to do none of this. I just want to lay down and take a nap and watch Netflix and eat some pizza, eat some ice cream, hang out with Dwight, hang out with my man and just chill. But let me tell you something. My future self will hate me for that. My future self will hate me if I allow comfort to get in the way of my progression. It's not an option for me. It's not an option for you. You have to want it to win it. I wake up in the morning and I realize that the life that I'm living now is great. It's amazing. But it's not the life that I want for myself. It's not the life that I want for my future kids who I really do not want those kids right now. But one day if I happen to have them, I want them to have the best life. And I have to be in control of that. I can't be a victim of my circumstances. I can't be a victim of laziness. I can't let any of those things impede on the person I want to become. So what I always tell myself is, and I check myself so much. I don't know. People think I'm like, I just, girl, she's perfect. She can do this. She can do that. No, in order to be to progress in order to be successful, you have to be okay with checking yourself and realizing when the life that you want and the work ethic that you currently have are not matching. There is no way for me to have this successful life if my work ethic is not matching it. There's no genies, there's no fairy godmothers, there is only a God and that's my belief and God will only meet you halfway. You have to do your part. So I do my part. Um, I can't I can't be lazy. I can't be complacent. Um, and it's hard because sometimes I want to and sometimes I do. And I realize that that does nothing but set me back. So it's all about mindset. I talk to myself. I encourage myself. I motivate myself. You have to be able to do that because people can't do that for you. You have to have a strong enough head frame and a strong enough mindset to be able to motivate yourself and get yourself out of your slump. When you're depending on people like your boyfriends, your girlfriends, your cousins, your aunts, your mom, your sister, your brother, it's hard for you to be successful because they got their own stuff to worry about. So I have to talk to myself. I have to encourage myself. I have to motivate myself. I have to keep my faith first and I have to remember what my ultimate and my end goal is and that is in all aspects of my life whether it's school whether it's business whether it's YouTube I gotta think of the end goal it is a journey it is a marathon it's not a sprint it's gonna take time it has to build off of each other you have to have a solid foundation all of those things are words and sentences and phrases that you guys have heard me say forever and I truly and wholeheartedly believe it I live by it and that is how I kind of stay motivated because I know I, I have no choice to become the woman that I was created to be I have no choice but to stay motivated so I hope that helps you but now I'm gonna get into the work-life balance because I got a hundred questions on on that so work-life balance this guy right here let me show you guys this guy along with my online digital planning system that I have done so many videos on check those out and I'll also be doing some more in the coming months because we're back in school that is what saves my life so it's not just the the, the fact that you're creating plans for yourself or you're writing in your planner it's like the discipline of sticking with it like there's nothing more fulfilling than like me writing in my planner like it's fulfilling I don't know why I just love it scary scary thing I've loved this since I was like in middle school like I just love it but what feels better than writing in my planner is crossing it off because I've accomplished it so to balance everything you have to really schedule it out and it sucks because you have to really plan your life but it's what you have to do especially when you have multiple things to balance so there are some people who I know and I don't know how they do it they balance a marriage they balance children, they balance careers, they balance side hustles, and they balance community involvement, like all these different things. And they make it happen because they're organized and they are focused on what they have to do at the point that they have to do it. So I have found that when I see what works for other people, I try and implement that and see if it can benefit me in any way. It does. It's helpful that you guys have seen so many videos about it, planning and organizing. I can't stress it enough. So what I'll say in particular is when you actually plan something, you want to actually do it. So if I say I'm going to set three hours aside to do my reading, I need to actually do my reading in those three hours because if not, that then sets me back and kind of prevents me from being able to do other 
things. So what can be challenging is I this upcoming semester, I will be working three days a week. I will be going to school four days a week. I will be content creating and I will be running my businesses. I will be a dog mom. I will be a girlfriend, but the, that is on the, that's, that's not priority. That is just one of my hats I wear. So I have to really think about how I want to set my life up. And I do need to plan, do a video on like planning that because I really haven't yet. I've just planned it mentally, but because I haven't started school yet and I still have a week to get it together, I'm going to spend my time on my flight doing that. But, um, or I might just do a video once I get back to the States about like just me planning out my semester. But that takes me actually like having to set my life up. So the tools that I use, I use my Google Calendar. Um, and what I love is that it sends alerts to my phone. You guys have seen previous planning videos. If you haven't, make sure you check them out where I tell you guys that an hour before I have to be somewhere, my phone will notify me and let me know that I have to be there. I use my planner to keep track of everything. I use to-do list to keep track of everything. I use both my iPad, um, my planner, my cell phone, and my computer. Everything is all synced. And that's the beauty of technology. It's not like I have 50 different calendars floating around on all of my devices. They're all synced. Um, and so it allows me to kind of see what I have to do and what I need to do. Um, another thing is prioritizing. So it's so easy to want to try and accomplish everything, but it's another thing to make sure that you're accomplishing the right things. So priorities are really important in terms of balancing things. Of course, we want to make this a balancing act and say like, this gets 50%, this gets 50%, or this gets, this gets 20, this gets 20, this gets 20, this gets 20. But I want to be honest, that's a very inefficient use of your time. If you give everything in your life 20% of you, you'll never truly progress because you're always doing lackluster work. So you have to know when it's time to give something all of you and when it's time to put other things on the back burner. Me personally, when I'm in law school, when I'm working, I don't have a problem with putting certain things on the back burner. And I had to learn that because before I did have a problem with that. Before I had an issue like trying to figure out like what gets priority or what takes precedent. But now like during exams, there's no date night. I ain't going on no date. I got to study. Like you have to be with a partner who gets it. There's no hanging out with my friends. Like there's, I have, I can't hang out with y'all. Like I won't be fun. I don't need to be with y'all right now. I have stuff to do. Like you have to, sometimes you have to be that person and it sucks. Sometimes you, you just cannot focus on your job. So there are some times where, when finals are coming around where you have to let your job know, hey, I have finals coming in three weeks. So I want to take the next three weeks off so that I can focus on my final exams. Once my final exams are done, I'll be on Christmas break and I can come in and work four days a week as opposed to the three week days a week that I was doing during the semester. Like you can work that out. But what I would say is in order to do that, you have to communicate. You have to vocalize what you're going through. Don't think that people just know that you're busy or people just know your schedule. Nobody knows your schedule but you. And half the time, you probably don't even know it because I've been there before. So vocalize what you're going through and what you're experiencing and be okay with saying no. We are so concerned with balancing things and some things don't deserve our attention or some things need to be put on the back burner. And it's hard to hear that because you want to do everything I know but it's inefficient school is a priority the amount of time that you're going to be in law school or business school is a few years and then you have your career and from there you can really do more you'll have more money you'll have more time you'll have more freedom you'll have more flexibility like you'll have more of those things but right now it's a grind and you can still do things like don't get me wrong like there are some people who put off their life completely like during the semester in law school, I don't have exams. So as long as I'm doing my reading and I'm staying true to my schedule and I'm staying like doing what I need to do and staying on top of my things, I can hang out with my friends. I can go out with my boyfriend. I can go spend the weekend with my family. I do it all the time. But I have to know that once um, April comes around and I have exams in May, it's solitude time. Like now it's time to grind. Now it's time to go, go ghost, um, limit my interactions with others, focus on my energy, stay positive, stay motivated, and get work done. Like, that's just how I am. So now once November comes around in the fall semester, I, I gotta go. I got stuff to do. Like, I'm trying to become an attorney. So that's 
that's how I do it. That's how I balance it. I actually stick to my schedule. I actually plan. I actually schedule. I stick to the plan. And then there are some times when balancing is not an option for me because certain things in my life take priority. Um, so that it, it helps you guys. It's all about just changing your perspective and changing your mindset. But that is what I wanted to share with you guys. So that's really it for the Q&A portion. I just want to leave you guys with a little bit of love and light because I have been there some of you guys are starting law school some of you guys are in the process of trying to become a law student whether you're preparing for the LSAT doing applications some of you guys are going into your last year it's tough but I am proud of you guys I am so happy for you guys you can do whatever you are willing to work for your mindset is the most powerful thing on the planet a positive state of mind will change your entire life don't let negativity affect you don't let outside forces infiltrate the goodness that is you you deserve everything that you want just go after it chase it be relentless be positive and i wish nothing but the best for all of you guys thank you so much for watching this video make sure you guys hit that subscribe button if you guys have any other videos that you guys want to see any other questions that you guys have if you guys want me to film another q a that's more centered around specific who what are you talking about that's more centered around specific things comment down below and let your girl know but thank you guys so much. I will see you guys in my next video. Make sure you guys hit that um, bell so you can be notified when new video comes up. I am in Europe, y'all. I'm in Germany. I'm just in the first week of law school. And I am really nervous about that. But it's fine. I will see you guys in my next video. Peace out. Oh, the camera is so close. But peace out. One, two, three. And don't you stop the music. Get into it. Won't you dance with me? Find a place and lose it. You can do it. Won't you dance with me? Move your feet and feel it in the space between. You gotta give yourself a moment. Let your body be. Downtown we let go. Sunset high and our bodies.